It's uh, 10.15. Uh, I'm uh, Roger Killen. I'm the uh, uh, interviewer of the 11 experts on the How to Achieve Reach and Influence free two-day seminar, uh, webinar, including basic training for speakers. <clears throat> this uh, webinar has a purpose, and the purpose is to let uh, speakers know that amazing speaking skills are not enough uh, when it comes to you achieving uh, reach and, and influence uh, at a global level. Uh, there are many other skill sets that you need to certainly be aware of and ideally master some of in order to uh, achieve uh, high impact for you, the speaker, and for your important message. Uh, our uh, second speaker, our second expert, is uh, George Vertolaga, and the title of George's uh, interview is How to Create and Publish a Printed Book. George Vertolaga, I just want to make absolutely sure that my mic is not muted. Yes, it's not muted. George Vertolaga is an author and speaker who's written four books on personal development two of which are Amazon bestsellers. He helps thought leaders create a much bigger impact by helping them write books that will change the world. George teaches the Author Success Course, which is designed for first-time authors who want to share their knowledge and expertise by writing a book. If you haven't written a book, George can show you how. George, over to you. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you, Roger. It's great to be here. Could you, uh, initial, as an initial step, describe for us how you would like to handle questions? Sure, Roger. So in the interest of uh, sticking with our schedule, um, I'd like to request everyone to be patient as I will try and answer uh, any questions that come in at the end. So. Just hang on to your questions, either write it down or put them in the chat box. Roger will manage all those questions and pass them on to me at the end where I will focus on just answering these questions. Okay, a little bit of correction there. Do not put them in the chat box. Put them in the Q&A box. Q&A box. And then, and then towards the end of our interview, George will answer all the questions. If uh, there are more questions than we have time, then uh, email George with your question. He'll provide you with his email in the course of our interview. Uh, just rest assured that by hook or by crook, all your questions will be answered. George, tell us why your expertise is crucial for speakers. Well, maybe I can uh, share my screen and show them. So, the thing is, books uh, are now the current business card. If you're an expert, uh, a book gives you instant credibility. And most people still regard authors very highly. They're given a lot of respect. And if you do happen to offer a course, a workshop, or consulting services, well, all you have to do is give people who don't know you at all a copy of your book. And that gives them an instant uh, read into who you are and what it is that you believe in. George, so, George do, you, do you think that you're sharing your screen? Um, let's see. Yeah, a bit of a glitch there. Uh, is it showing yes, up? You're, yes, you're sharing your screen now. Thank you. Yeah, sorry about that. Got a lot of technology. So, um, and thanks for the heads up. So a book then uh, immediately tells people who you are and what you do. So if you think of it this way, uh, let's say for those of you that do offer coaching or consulting or workshops, that piece uh, where you teach people what to do, what it is that you believe in, that's the how piece. Now, some of you have thought, well, Maybe you should do more or take a step back and write a book. Well, what a book does, it gives you that what and the why piece. Meaning, it explains to people, well, 
this is why I wrote this book, this is why I believe in the system, and this is what the system is about. And then the, the book is kind of a perfect lead-in to that system, or rather that workshop or course that you're offering. So for example, uh, if you wanted to uh, teach people how to ride a bike, uh, the book shows people why it's important to ride a bike, and these are more or less the, the steps to riding a bike. The actual workshop teaches it, right? But you don't expect people to learn how to ride a bike just by reading a book. Um, so another way to look at it is uh, some of you may or may not have heard about Tony Robbins. So he's been around for a while. And for those of you that have any insight into what he used to do, now he teaches uh, Fortune 500 CEOs. He started out with this very interesting activity called a firewalk, firewalk, where he would walk people through coals of fire. So that happened in a three or a five day workshop that he used to deliver. I'm not sure if he still does that. But all of that, what gave birth to that, was his book. When he wrote Awaken the Giant Within, uh, the book kind of became a self-selecting tool for people to, who are ready to like, go forward in their self-development, going, you know what, I'm ready to be a leader. I'm ready to you know, get my business off the ground. I'm ready to change. I think this workshop, this far walk workshop, is the right one. But for Tony Robbins to be able to get people to go to his workshop, he needed to put out that book that, well, this is why I wrote this book. This is what you will learn. Uh, which becomes the lead into, okay, so you want to go forward and really expand your, your, your mind and, and achieve, then go to my, then go to my fire walk workshop. But before that work, people were to go sign up for that workshop, they needed to get to know about Tony Robbins and his business card was his book. So that's why these days uh, it makes sense to have a book because that serves as the introduction to who you are, what it is that you do, and out of, let's say, uh, 100,000 or 20,000 people, you'll get that you know, X amount of really serious people that want to pursue learning with you. So what it is, it's, I guess it's kind of like a sorting tool. Uh, the book helps you find your tribe, and it helps uh, you lead them to the next step, which is whatever it is that you offer after, whether it's me as a consultant, a coach, a mastermind leader, facilitator, or trainer. And George, how, how, where did you get your, how did you build your expertise in this field of writing uh, traditional paper books? Um, so, ever since I, I can remember, uh, since I was young, I, I would write reports, papers, essays, um, under the gun. So I had to produce it in 45 minutes, an hour, and even up to now, I still write for magazines and newspapers, lifestyle articles. And again, I had to write under a deadline. So eventually, uh, after running you know, several businesses and coming up with, you know, uh, decided to give advice to people on how they can enhanced their performance. This is how I started writing personal development books. I decided to kind of uh, put together those best practices so that I could help myself achieve two things. Okay, so the, there's, there's two, two things that I try to do whenever I try and write books. One is I try and write a book that is freeful. In other words, it has to be educational, it has to be entertaining, and it has to be inspiring. Because if your book isn't entertaining or inspiring, uh, this is the kind of the anecdotal statistic. They abandon your book after page 18 or something. And then the second objective that I have is when I write a book, I have to be done with it in three or four months. Otherwise, I become that person that, you know, two, three, four years later, whenever I meet people and they ask me, so how's your book coming along? I'm like, oh, it's still going, right? For me, there's no reason you need to write a book in one or two years when you can write it in four to six months. That's why I came up with this 
kind of uh, system or these best practices, which eventually evolve into Pocket Success Course. So that's how the course came about. It was for me basically uh, started out. And then when people ask me about it, oh, you, you seem to write uh, one book every year. How do you do it? Um, I put it together and decided to offer it to other people so that they could create their books in six months or less. So that's how that came about. Great, thanks, George. Uh, could you offer us um, 30 minutes of basic training on how to go about the whole process of writing a traditional paper book? Sure. So what I'll do is uh, I will describe to the audience uh, what is supposed to be the most intelligent way uh, to create a book from concept to launch uh, in a way that also ensures that you make you know, the most amount of income that you can. Uh, here's the thing, even before you start writing a book. So let me describe it. So, um, so I have two types of courses, and they both cover the same material. So it covers the entire process, which is encapsulated in four modules. So for the first, uh, for the self-led uh, training that I have, uh, it covers again these these four steps or these modules that I call them. And I firmly believe that before you write a single word, you need to start with marketing. So for my module one that I teach, uh, I go through people through the nuts and bolts. Okay, so this is who you need to target, or let's discuss who you need to target and let's discuss your message, because your message needs to hit the right people. So if your message hits the, your, the right people, then you need less effort to promote your book, because the people that, the intended audience, that your book is aimed for will simply promote your book for you. That's the most efficient way. That's how you build your tribe. Is to think about, well, who's gonna buy this book? Why are they gonna buy this book? And what do I hope for these, you know, for my target audience to do after they buy the book? So once you figure that out, uh, and then it becomes easier for you to generate sales. So, one of the other important steps that I have for the marketing part is to organize, is to teach how to organize and empower your network so that, well, tangibly, uh, they'll be the ones to give you those positive reviews. And if you have positive re reviews, well, guess what? Then you have reviews at the back, you have reviews inside, even before you've sold a single copy of your book. And if your network knows what you're about to do, then guess what? Your initial sales will come from your network and they will help you or they will help propel your book to Amazon bestseller status. Because here's what uh, a lot of uh, first time or novice authors do, right? Before, or rather, once the, the idea of writing a book comes into their head, uh, I would say 90, 95% of you know, first time authors will probably on Monday decide, you know, I'll spend an hour or two, write a book. And then they do that. By Tuesday, the momentum starts to slow down, and by Wednesday, they run out of gas. And then six months, a year, two years later, you'll, you'll still see the same manuscript which hasn't been touched. Now, that's your approach that, I, that I'm trying to steer people away from because. Uh, writing to me is step three. That's why I teach it as a third module because you know what you're an expert of. It's all in your head. You don't, uh, you know, that's very easy. All you have to do is organize that information in a way that educates, inspires, and entertains people. But you need to take a step back from that and think about, you know, the mechanics of promotion, marketing, and basically making your book into a phenomenon that people will want to read and act on. Because I want people to stop thinking as a book, of their book as a baby. You know, a book is not your baby, it's a business. Okay, so uh, another advantage of organizing you know, people around the idea that, you know, okay, so I'm about to write my book, I need your help, 
at the very beginning before they even before you even write a single word is that you know what you can go back to the people in network and you can ask for their help in helping to improve your book see so it really pays to tell everyone that you know your personal your business network that you're about to write your book a and b you're about to launch it you know in x amount of time whether it's six months or a year and everyone's primed they're ready to go, and every time you see them, maybe every few months, they're kind of you know encouraging you, and they're there. It's like, how's your book coming? Up? So you become accountable to them, and by the end of that six months or a year, or a year, year, they're ready to help you promote your book. Because guess what? You got them involved at the very beginning, and you get them all excited. And after all that time, they're like, okay, tell us what to do. We'll get it off the ground. Versus, you know, someone approaches you. Hey, Roger, guess what? You know, I haven't seen you in a few years or in six months, and I just finished writing a book last week. So you as a person wouldn't care as much because guess what? You didn't get people involved in the whole process and the birthing uh, of that book. So they don't care as much, and therefore they won't help you. But if you get them in early and kind of think about your marketing, not only do you know, uh, who your target audience is, you'll get a better idea of well, what they want, what kind of results they want to see. And lastly, you want their help in making your book a bestseller. So that covers basically the marketing. And then my second module, and again, this is a process that uh, a lot of smarter authors use, is then they think about the publishing. So most uh, authors, first-time authors especially, have to decide, do I want to go the, the traditional route or do I want to go the self-publishing? So with, with both processes, there are pros and cons. Obviously, uh, if you go uh, with a traditional publisher, then um, it'll take them two to three years, sometimes four years, to get the book off the ground. With self-publishing, you have a shorter timeline and people, you know, can get their hands onto a copyright book faster. So what route do you want? Do you want to uh, go with an agent, uh, go to the publishing house and let them handle the production, the marketing, or do you want to do it yourself? So we analyze both approaches and see what works better for your goal. Um, now let's say you choose self-publishing. Now that is a very complicated piece because that's what traditional publishers do, right? They take charge of the cover design, the editing, the getting it to bookstores, the marketing it, all of, and all that you know, sort of lovely little those things that happen around book publishing. If you go self-publishing, you you're now the publisher. You take care of all that. And if that's the road you want to take, then I show you. Well, now that you've decided to project manage your own book. Um, this is how to find a good editor, a good printer, a good cover, and interior designer in order to, to create a professional looking book that will have maximum impact. Thing is, if uh, most people will judge a book by its cover, so they get a, you know, they give them a book, tell them, you know, I've written this book. It's kind of like a business card, and they look at it, and it doesn't look great, it looks homemade. Guess what? They might not even open it because like it or not a book gets judged by its cover so now let's say you were able to find a really good designer and people open your book they start reading then guess what they find a couple of mistakes every few pages uh, this is how people are at they go oh my gosh this book is a bunch of crap not only did this guy uh, not bother to hire the editor to clean up the grammar or uh, kind of make the material flow more seamlessly, it's coming across as pretty dumb. So you don't want to have those kinds of obstacles along the way. You want, you want to work basically with an editor who is top notch and will encourage people to get to the end because that's what you want people to do get to the end, go to the back page, instructing them, you know, what to do next. Do they sign up uh, for a newsletter? 
Do they have to attend a course or go to a website where they can download free things? You want people to go to the end, and the way to do that is to not have anything to block that entire process. And having mistakes, uh, a very not very smooth way of writing, having it very dry. Because if the book's too dry, then it reads like a college textbook. And again, people will struggle to get to the end. So really, you have to find a good team of people. And in self-publishing, you kind of have to organize that team yourself. So I show you how to go about both uh, types of ways, and depending on your cup of tea. Um, most authors actually choose to go the self-published route because basically they're impatient. You know? When they write their book, they want it done six months, a year. And of course, self with self-publishing, you have your book out in the market ready to sell um, as soon as you're done. As soon as your publisher prints the books, sends them to you, you're in business. But with uh, traditional publishing, uh, not only are your rights controlled by another party, uh, you have to conform to the schedule. If they say, uh, I want you to travel uh, this week to Vancouver, next week to uh, Seattle, a month from now to New York, and then two months from now in Toronto, you have to do whatever it is that they tell you to. Whereas with self-publishing, you're your own boss. So you discuss all of that because uh, as you may have imagined, you know, distribution, sales, that's a very, those are key things that you need to know around your book because you can't leave that to chance. If people want your book, they have to be able to, there has to be a means for them to be able to order it and be able to read it. So now, you, all of you are wondering, so when does the writing happen? Well, this is when it happens. That's uh, in week three. This is where we find out, okay, so uh, now how do we come up with something that doesn't bore people? How's, how do we help them read something that is interesting? Uh, how do we give them a book that doesn't ramble? And how can we give them a book that not only will they be excited to finish, but share with others? So what are the keys? How do we make it such that you know, people will want to share to the world and kind of sing praises to high heavens about how great the book is. Well, that's one challenge, right? And another challenge in book production is, well, how do I not get stuck? And for a lot of people, that's why that book turns into, instead of a three to four month or six month project, it becomes three to five years, right? It's because they don't have a system, right? Here's what all of you need to, to think about. You already have everything that you need stuck in your head. It's there. You just have to kind of offload it, put it on a piece of paper, or you know, put it in a Word document. You simply just have to organize the material. And that is a very big key. The thing with, um, I would call them, let's say, how-to authors, right? Not just business, but how-to authors. People who want to teach you how to you know, overcome addiction or overcome bad habits, how to maximize your personal performance, you know, how to take better care of yourself, either health-wise or nutrition-wise. You already have that information. You don't have to invent anything. You're not writing Lord of the Rings or... Um, Harry Potter for the first time. You don't have to invent universes, characters, plot. You just have to lay it out. And that's what I teach you to do, is how do we map everything that's in your head so that first we decide, well, what's going to be book one? What's going to be the second book? And what's going to be the third book? So we map it out, not just in terms of one book, but in terms of a series. So I teach you how to think in a bigger way. Because if you can write one, well, why not write three or five? And people always enjoy it when you have more books to offer rather than, oh, he's a one trip pony. And that's all he has. Uh, you become more credible when you have several books. I show you how to do that. And going back to just that one book, I show you how to kind of map out the entire book and write it from beginning to end. Uh, 
in a few days. Because if you can map out your entire book, guess what? You've mapped out what you need to write in four or five weeks. Because this is the problem. First time authors will go to their uh, desk, sit on their chair, and then they don't have a plan for what to write for that particular day. And that's where you get stuck. So to avoid that, I show you exactly what to write from the beginning and end, so that you know what to write from week to week, from day to day, so that you can every week achieve one chapter. Because that's the goal. If you can achieve one chapter a week, and let's say your book has six chapters or seven, your draft is finished in seven weeks. You see, finishing the draft is the name of the game. If you finish your first draft, you're 80% done. The rest is just polishing, cover design, editing, you know, things like that. That's easy. 95% of first-time authors will never finish their first draft. If you cannot finish your first draft, you have no book. If you have no book, you have no practice. Because the book more or less crystallizes everything that you do. So everything you do has to revolve around your book. Your book is your belief system. It's your philosophy. It's what you do. It's what drives all the things that you do, all your activities. So you need to finish your book. And you have to sit, you need, you need to have a system for, so that every day you know what to do. You're just kind of, uh, you're going through a task list and you're writing, today I need to write about this. Tomorrow I need to write about that. Wednesday I need to write about this. You don't, we, it has to be in such a way that you're not even thinking. You're just kind of organizing everything that's in your head. And remember, I told you that you already have your expertise in your head. You're just kind of picking and choosing from what's in your head and what to put in your book. And remember, you have to make it entertaining and inspiring as well. I suspect that most authors can probably do the educational part. That's, that's easy. But education without entertainment that's a college textbook. And you all probably remember how exciting a college textbook is, right? It's not. <laughs> it's very dry and it's very hard to go through. And the harder it is to go through your book, the harder it is to, for people to finish reading and they will not finish it and they will not talk about it to other people. So how do you do that? So teach it the secret to smooth and easy writing. Last but not least, we talk about platform building. So platform building goes back to the, to the first marketing thing. Those two are integrated. That's why they bookend each other. And with platform building, you now have to think beyond your book. Okay, let's pretend, for example, that my book is sitting on my desk. What do I do now? So the way I lay out my course, I, make, I force you to think about that even before you finish writing a book. Because then that's you know, where the rubber meets the road, right? What do you do with your book now? How do you take your whole expertise, your practice forward, right? How do you influence people? How do you change the world? So maybe one example that you've seen or maybe are already doing yourself is you probably get on a stage, right? And that's the other advantage of having a book, right? Remember how I said it was a business card? Another thing that a book does, and so why it's critical to have a book, is that a book gives you access. Access to what? Access to paid speaking, access to consulting, coaching gigs, where you can easily earn you know, five to $10,000 a day on workshops, on keynotes and all that. That's what a book, that's the kind of doors books will open for you. So that's what I force my authors to start thinking about. It's like, okay, what happens now? What do you do when you've got people at the edge of their seats and asking for more? What is your follow-up product, right? I like to call it product, whether it's a workshop, a coaching gig, or a, let's say a three-day retreat. Do you have something like that? If not, I walk you through the process of, okay, so this is how you can create those based on your book. Because remember my example about Tony Robbins and the firewall? His firewall was basically an extension of his book. He talked about some NLP techniques, kind of some Jedi mind tricks, if you know, I may borrow that term, of how you could overcome your fears and expand your comfort zone so that you could do more. 
and kind of his firewalk thing is kind of a metaphor for, well, okay, this is how you break through those barriers of whatever it is that that's holding you back. So Tony Robbins was all about human performance. So the firewalk kind of was the kind of the, the way for him to move you forward and move past those blocks. Regardless, though, he had a three-day retreat, which came about, which was a seamless kind of extension of the book. So for those of you who might be going, oh, that's why it works. So I hope that answers your question as well as, well, why do all these authors or these, these experts or these speakers, why do they offer me something after they speak? Well, guess what? Going back to that bike riding example, you know what, if I speak on a stage and talk about bike riding, I don't expect you to learn how to ride a bike just from a one-hour seminar. Right? We now have to go to the next step of, okay, maybe you have to spend half a day. I'll teach you how to ride a bike. So that half a day, two day, five day, whatever it is that you have, I teach you how to, if you don't have one already, how to create that from your book. Because that's really how experts generate money. Keynote speeches, you can get paid 5,000 and up to deliver an hour, an hour long speech. Coaching workshops, I know tons of people that work either half day or whole days and they charge anywhere from five to 10,000 a day. That is what a lot of people don't realize about being an author. That whole world of, you know, that earning half a million starts from the book, but then you need to build a business around the book of either workshops, courses, uh, consulting, um, or retreats. So right alongside your book is you delivering your information and changing people's behaviors and habits. Because really, that's what the book is. So I hope now you're getting that light bulb, bulb over your head about, oh, okay, so the book kind of triggers the people. Yes, that's the one in the high, uh, the one in the why, sorry. It, it, it orients them on who you're about and what you're about. And then it invites them to take the next step of, okay, uh, I read your book, I agree with what you're saying, help me to move forward. What, what do I do next? So the book is a trigger for your how piece now for your, you know, your, your mastermind program, your coaching, whatever, because that's now how you initiate change. So some of you are already doing that uh, in one way or the other. But if you don't have the, the book piece, then how will people know about what you're, what you're doing or what your work is about if uh, you don't have a brochure? So that's how the book and the practice of coaching, consulting, and delivering workshops kind of tie together. And they have to be seamless. But for people to move seamlessly to that next step, your book has to be written really well. It can't be, a, I don't know, written in, uh, one day or two days kind of thing and random whatever it has to be really well thought of it has to resonate and it has to have impact and I, and I teach people how to write with impact instead of just oh writing just so I can have a book put my name out there you have to be careful about that I mean that's that's your signature that's you so gotta be a good book and that's uh, what I teach in uh, my, uh, where I take it, uh, self-led, which is four ninety nine, and I have a, and I have a, a special one-on-one -on -one program for people who want to walk through the whole process with a live person, with an instructor, which right now is myself. Uh, some people just want to go work with somebody else. Some people want to do it themselves. They're fine with that. That's my kind of basic program. Advanced will be work with me for a year. Uh, George, uh, uh, what do these programs cost? So uh, the self-guided version is uh, four ninety-nine. Basically, uh, four pre-recorded webinars. Uh, people listen to them. They get my slide deck, and then they basically go through the material themselves. They absorb it and work through finishing their own book on their own. But for the instructor-led program, um, they work with me. I help them not only write the book, but over the course of the year, uh, develop that 
uh, that platform that helps them earn you know six or seven figures. Uh, I show I show them how to develop one hour talks that get decision makers to try them as a speaker or as a facilitator, and I also show them how to turn their books into that two or three day weekend retreat that a lot of authors and experts have uh, to change behavior. And that's twelve thousand for an entire year. And that's twelve thousand, did you say? Yes. And it's about a thousand a month. So that instructor led program is really working with uh, speakers to build a speaking business, of which yes. the, book, the book is an element, but it's only one of many yes. elements. Okay. Yeah, yeah you're right. Uh, that, that's how you build a real business. Because uh, one, one thing that gets a lot of people off track is they try and build a business by selling books. And really, uh, personally, I don't find that to be effective. I think it's better that you um, try and create a business around your book by delivering your expertise, either by coaching, consulting, workshops, okay. with the book sales being kind of gravy. If you try and sell units and units of books, like trying to go for 100,000, and remember, for a traditional published book, you only make 50 cents per hour, a dollar a book. At the most, you can make 100000 a year, and you can't really replicate that every year. It's, it's not a sustainable business model. It's, it's like writing. It's like trying to come up with a best-selling movie. And as you know, movies only make it in three or four months. And the next year, you, have, you need a new movie. The same movie doesn't earn uh, a million or 50 million every year. Consistently. It's the same with the book. So it's more sustainable to have something around the book, whether you do keynote speaking, workshops, coaching. That's that's the way to earn six or seven figures, in my mind. Anyway. Uh, George, in the in the first program, the the uh, the online program, uh, not yes. not instructor led, is it uh, possible that a diligent uh, student could write uh, and self publish their book in three months? Uh, yes, I do it all the time, and I don't spend the entire day doing it. You spend a maximum of two hours a day. All right. Uh, on that um, on that um, online program, uh, do the do the people who buy it have any access to you? Uh, no, they uh, do it themselves. They uh, figured out all the all on their own. Um, that's why it's four ninety nine. Okay. The 12,000 thing, they can ask all the questions they want. I can guide them. It's just for people who need to work with somebody else. Because sometimes writing books like working out, you need some of the practical whip. That's why you pay personal trainers. All right. You want to pay some of the practical whip. And that's what they pay me for. Do, do you have a hybrid uh, where people can buy the online program for round figures $500 and then? there is some basis upon which they can engage you for, for a specific consultation? Yes, they can hire me to do kind of, sort of like a mastermind thing where they pay my time. Um, either it's uh, an increment of six months, six months or a year. And then they have to, and then I give them X amount of hours per month, then they can ask me whatever they want. Okay, and how yeah, much, how much does that uh, cost? Uh, they can ask me about that. I'm, I'm still working it out. Uh, some people are asking me about a hybrid model. But uh, yeah, they can. I can give it to them when they call me. I have my contact info All here. Right. And we can discuss it. Okay, maybe, maybe you could leave that up. Uh, what, are your, what are your thoughts upon, uh, about hi hiring a ghostwriter? So that's the, uh, that we, we would call that the done for you, basically. You hire a ghostwriter. Uh, some people obviously want to have a book. They want to have a good book. But for whatever reason, they, they don't want to write. They don't see themselves as writing on their own. They want to outsource the whole piece. Uh, what most people have done over the years, and even up to now, is they hire a ghostwriter. That would be done for you. Um, from what I've seen, there's different price points, and you have to be careful. Um, I've even seen ghostwriting at 5,000 bucks. And I'd be careful about that. You get what you pay for. Most of the good ones start at about 20,000. Because here's what you have to remember with ghostwriting. Uh, 
a lot of these people that you pay, they don't know what's going in your head. They have, you have to pay them to get in your head. And it will not take them three to six months. Usually the process becomes longer. It becomes a six to 12 month process because they have to get into your head, figure out, figure out what you're trying to say. And that back and forth causes that lag time. Uh, but the, that said, the really good ones also will, will be careful about how to write your book because they want to sound like you. The really good ones will try and sound like it's you speaking. Um, everyone else will just try and write it in their own voice, which doesn't sound like you. And if that's not a concern, um, then there's that option. But you have to remember, when you speak on stage, your book needs to sound like the same person who's on the stage. So. There, there, there has to be that sympathy between the ghostwriter and you. If you find a good ghostwriter, it takes you know, searching, right? Because there's people who charge all sorts of money. But the one that fits well for you, uh, usually they're not cheap. You want a good book, and you don't want to write it yourself. You want a hard ghostwriter. Be prepared to pay between twenty to 30000 for a good ghostwriter. So that currently is what would constitute is done for you. Anything below 15, I'd be suspect. It's, it might just be a factory. Okay, that's quite a, quite a range. All right, so uh, we're now uh, opening, uh, opening the Q&A for uh, any questions that you might have. Uh, audience, if you would type your questions in, then I will uh, verbalize them to George. And uh, between us, we'll get um, all your questions answered. Fire away. George, you must have been amazing because uh, nobody has any questions. Um, sometimes I leave audience to stun because they're, they're sorting through things in their own head. <laughs> they don't want to ask. They have too many questions to ask. Um, okay. And uh, anyone interested about uh, the publishing business, how it works? Do you have any questions about publishing? Usually that's uh, a question I get asked often. But which is better, self-publishing, traditional? Well, what, uh, that's why, don't, why don't you talk to us about that until uh, some questions appear? Sure. Uh, I have a natural bias towards self-publishing. Why? Because you get your book out there quickly. You control the price. Uh, you control your profit. Uh, on the other hand, if you're already busy, as most of the people I work with are, owners of their own businesses, their CEOs, VPs of their own company, they're like, oh my God, I have to project manage a team. That's a very big piece for them to chew. So that's why a lot of people would rather have or work with a traditional publishing house because that gets all done. Uh, but keep in mind, you'll see your book in three or four years. It's that long lag time because there's 59 or 49 people ahead of you, you're author number 50. It takes three to four months to work to produce someone's book. So they have to work through 49 other books ahead of you before they get to your book. So that's why I tell people, well, you want a book next week or six months? Self-publish. Uh, but again, it does become daunting if you're already busy. But uh, if you work with me, I show you how to organize those pieces so to make it a more manageable process. Yeah, I, I, I just think it's, it's, it's in a lot of ways, it, it gives you more control to self-publish. But for those of you who uh, are a little weary of uh, doing more stuff, adding more to your plate, then definitely a traditional publishing group is the way to go. And I'll show you how to do that. Um, do you go straight to the publishing house? Do you try and find an agent first? What about contracts and all that? That's, uh, yeah, that's a whole piece we've talked about for over half a day. But rest assured, there's, there's, there's two ways, right? Uh, and of course, you bear the brunt of uh, production if you self-publish, whereas for the publishing house, they take care of all of that. That's why you only get 50 cents for a dollar. It's, they absorb the costs. They take a risk. So uh, that's why it costs you almost nothing. That's also why you get a small piece of profit. That's why take so long and that's why I encourage you to not think about book sales as a retirement strategy. Uh, you need to rely on still the delivery of your expertise 
as the main strategy to generate revenue or income. Uh, any questions that come in, Roger? Uh, no, no questions are in. Um, so I think uh, uh, we'll just uh, move now to thank you very much for sharing your your time, talent, and expertise sure. with us. Can you uh, put on the screen your contact information so that if people need uh, uh, some clarification, they know how to reach you? Uh, sure. Hold on. Let me share that would screen. Be the share screen with your contact info slides. Slide. Share screen. Yep. But, um, that's my phone, email, address, and uh, link to my course. Lovely. Lovely. Uh, okay, George, well, thank you uh, uh, very, very much for uh, sharing uh, your wisdom with us. Uh, it's now uh, 11 o'clock. Uh, Rod Jens is our next uh, expert. Uh, Rod is on at uh, 11.30, and Rod is speaking about how to podcast as both a guest and on the other side of the equation as a host. Uh, George, thank you. Audience, I'll see you back in 30 minutes for Rod Jens. Roger, Roger. out. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Okay. Bye.